Okay, so for this one, what we're going to do first before we take the antiderivative and use the inverse power rule is we're going to first convert all this over into powers. So I'm going to change all these into rational exponents and then I'm going to divide them all by x squared and then I'll be ready to do the inverse power rule here. So f let's get started with that. When we do the first one, this is x to the first power and then this is x to the one half power. So when you multiply those together, you're going to add the exponents, 1 plus 1 half. That's going to give you x to the 3 halves. The next one is going to be x to the 1 third. And then I have minus x to the first power. All this is being divided by x squared. So now that I've done that, what I'm going to do is every single term on top, I'm going to divide it by x squared on the bottom. Okay, so I'm going to do x to the 3 halves over x squared, 2x to the 1 third divided by x squared, and then x over x squared. And you can do that. You can split this up because there's only one term on the bottom. Now we're just going to subtract our exponents. We're just going to go ahead and leave it in terms of negative exponents, so that way it's automatically set up so we can do our inverse power rule. Okay, so we're going to subtract that. 3 halves minus 2. It's going to give you x to the negative one-half. This one, we're going to subtract these exponents. One-third minus six-thirds. That's going to give you negative five-thirds. And then this last one, that's going to give us x to the negative one. So now that we have it all in this form, we're ready to do the inverse power rule for each of these. So when we do that, we don't need the integral symbol anymore. This one, we're going to raise the power by 1, divide by the new power. So if we, we add 2 over 2 to that, we get positive 1 half. Then we're going to divide it by 1 half. Next, I have a 2x. If I add 1 to that, I'm adding 3 over 3, negative 2 thirds, divided by negative 2 thirds. Now, for this one over here, when you have x to negative 1, if I add 1 to that, I get 0, and then I'm dividing by 0. That's not going to work with inverse power rule. This is one of those special ones we talked about earlier. If you have the integral of 1 over x, antiderivative of that, that's going to be natural log of x. So for this one, we're going to do natural log of x, and then don't forget to put the, the plus c there. So now it's just a matter of simplifying this. When we flip the 1 half there, I'm going to get 2 x to the 1 half, and you can leave it that way if you'd like to write it as a square root, you can do that also. This one, when we flip it, it'll turn negative. We're going to have 2 times 3 halves, because you multiply by the reciprocal. And when we do that, we'll just be left with 3. And then x to the 2 thirds, I'm just going to put that down below like that. And I have minus natural log of x uh, plus c. Remember, you do need the absolute values on that one because you want to make sure that whatever you put in there is positive so that way it works with the domain for natural log.